Hey guys, welcome to part 7 of this Godot Flappy Bird clone tutorial series. So in this video we're going to just look at how we can start spawning our obstacles in our scene and have them scroll past our player in varying heights to just create some challenge in the game. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please do so now and hit that notification bell to get updates in future. So let's uh, jump into this tutorial and just go through what we need to do quickly. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in a timer to have a timed way of creating our obstacles. So in our game node, we're going to right click and add a child node and we're going to search for time and put in a timer. Then we need a way of grouping our obstacles that we're going to be instantiating. So we're going to go ahead and create another child node called node. But then in this node, we're going to go ahead and just rename it to obstacles. And then as we instantiate our obstacles, we will add them to this node in our scene. So let's start off by just extending our obstacle script. So in our obstacle script, we want to now start adding physics and we need a way to move our, our obstacles across our screen and give it some sort of offset. So the first two variables we're going to be using here is var velocity. And that's going to be a simple vector two. And then the next one is going to be a range. And this is just the object of random number, number generator and we're going to instantiate it. So we'll use this object to generate random ranges for us. And then we can shift our obstacle up and down on the Y axis. So in our ready function, we'll go ahead and start that process. So first we're going to call range f dot randomize just to give this a random seed. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll create a Y offset. So this will determine how high our obstacle is in our game and where it will be placed. So here we'll use range f dot rand f range so we need a float value and for now we're going to start with minus 200 to 200 to position our obstacle next we need to set the position of our obstacle so position dot y is going to be position dot y uh, plus our y offset and you'll see that we're going to get an error now on this position. That's because we are extending node. So change this to node 2D and you now will have access to that position property. Next, we need to create a physics process. So func physics process and it's going to take in delta and we're going to start off with a velocity on the X axis of negative 350 so our obstacle will be moving from right to left towards our player and then we just need to do a cleanup so we'll check if our kinematic body 2d dot global position dot x is less than minus 550 then we will queue free or delete our obstacle object so this 550 might be wrong. We'll play around with this value, but this is a guess. Um, so you're going to have to probably adjust this based on your, your game and the size of your objects. So next we need to just move our kinematic body. So we'll take our kinematic body and we'll move and slide by the velocity that we have set. So now something just to take note of is you need to just check your obstacle 
scene and see we've got this kinematic body 2d that's for the top obstacle and the bottom obstacle is this collision or this kinematic body 2d2 so we basically need to move both so let's just duplicate this code and do the same for this second kinematic body so basically that's going to allow our obstacle to move in our scene next we need to have a spawner so if you click on game over here we're going to go ahead and attach a spawner to our game node just to make things simple but you can go ahead and even create a node under the game which is spawner and attach your spawner script there but i'm just going to attach it to the game node for now so on scripts over here we're going to right click and we're going to create a new script and I'm going to call it spawner.gd and I'm going to go ahead and attach it to our game node and now we can actually just get going with this but before we do that we just want to fix up our obstacle scene because we don't want our obstacles to be spawning from the left we want them to be spawning from out here so to do that we're going to just go over into our obstacle and we're just going to make sure that everything is here on the right so let's just have a look at the individual items so we want to just make sure they are all lined up so our sprite needs to be lined up with our actual crosshair over there and also these see the collision shape the area needs to be over here and let's just get our collision shape over there so just make sure all these crosses line up so the hook going to bring that over and i actually want it to be a little higher and then the area 2d we want to move over like so and then we want to get the collision shape correct as well. Let's see why is this not lining up? So we're gonna just line that up there. And then we're going to bring the collision shape over like that. So these crosses more or less line up, and that will just simplify things when we try to move our obstacle. So this obstacle is now not aligned there. So let's give move all these in line with our obstacle okay so when our obstacle then gets created it will start off from here and slowly move left towards our player save that and now we can start instantiating what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of this obstacle out of the scene because we don't need it anymore we're going to be spawning these and let's start off with the spawner script so open that up and what we're going to do here now is we're going to just start instantiating our obstacles so first thing to do is to bring in our actual obstacle scene so we need to use it on ready and we're going to call this obstacle prefab and we're going to preload so let's use the Godot suggestions and we're going to use obstacle.tsen and then simply we're going to connect our timer to the script so click on timer node over here and in the node and in timeout and connect it to the game so now you'll see every time this timer is run out it will then go and create a obstacle so var obstacle and we just want to instance our obstacle prefab. Instance it. And then we want to add it as a child node to obstacles. So we'll just use this method and we'll go obstacles and we'll add obstacle. So let's run this and see if it's creating our obstacles. So there's an error, that's because this connect no longer will work because we've removed that obstacle from our scene. We'll connect this up 
a little later again to make it work for all our obstacles. So now our player is just going to be able to swim through our obstacles. Stop and let's play and let's have a look. We still have an error, it's because of the, the menu. So let's just add a pass over here and let's try again. Okay. We should hopefully be getting some obstacles. Which we're not, and it's probably because of our timer. So let's just make sure our timer auto start. And I just want to make this four seconds instead of one. And let's play in and give it a go. So you see there's an obstacle. And there's another obstacle. And this will go on infinitely now. And our player will be able to swim through this. And we'll be able to add some scoring in a later tutorial. So guys, that's basically the end of this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll look at fixing this up so that we can connect the kill player signal back onto all the obstacles. And we will also look at the scoring system and setting that up. And then in the final tutorial, we will finish up the scoring system and that will be the end of this series so guys thanks for watching hope this has been useful subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and i will see you in the next video